Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 17. Hey, if you don't want to download this workbook, Business 210 Excel 2010 Chapter 2, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we're still talking about frequency distributions, but we got to talk about cumulative frequency distribution and percent cumulative. And the end goal here is to create a chart like this or like this. This one shows our histogram. This is our purchases from our 200 um, sample of transactions at a Boomerang website. The columns represent the height, but this represents the cumulative percentage. And here's how you interpret it. In fact, why am I? I've got to zoom in here. The upper limit for this class is 150 bucks. It means 90% of the transactions were for 150 bucks or less. Now, and this is called a uh, ogive chart. This is kind of a combined chart histogram and ogive. Here's a more typical ogive chart. Again, we get the same information. Right here, it's about 90% at 150. So this is the upper limit for that class. It means 90% of the boomerangs were sold for, the transactions were for $150 or less. Here, about 75% of the transactions were for a hundred bucks or less. So that's an ogive chart or a cumulative uh, that shows a cumulative frequency. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go to the sheet called ogive. All right, we're going to create our upper lower values based on an increment, our labels, our frequency, and then our cumulative frequency. Now we've done all this already, so I'll do this kind of fast. We have our revenue data, increments of 50. So I say, hey, the lower end plus, and that's a relative cell reference, that locked. I hit the F4 key to lock that cell reference. Now I copy it down one. Now here, I say equals the upper from the previous class. Now I highlight those two cells. They'll work all the way down. So now we have our upper and lower. Our label, this we, we're going to create this label for our chart because notice we have our 50s. Where is it included? For us, it's included on the upper. Um, it's included on the lower end, not the upper. So this 100 not included in this class. It's included down here. So we're going to make a label, and we saw earlier how to make a couple different types of labels. I'm going to say that lower end and the join symbol ampersand that shift seven, and then in text, uh, in double quotes space, up to space, and double quote, ampersand. So we've joined the lower with the text and then the upper. So we created a text formula. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now, uh, now let's do our frequency. Again, we've done this a few times so far. We have an upper and lower, which means a criteria, two criteria in the interval. So we say count ifs, criteria range, this column right here, control shift down our F4, comma, and then in double quotes, we need our comparative operator greater than or equal to ampersand to join it with the lower end. Remember, the equal sign for us is going to be on the low end, comma, and I can just copy this highlight, control C. Control V. So now I get to my second criteria, and in double quotes, less than, and double quote, and join it with our upper. These are locked. These are not. Our formula will work just fine. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, cumulative. Now, there's a f two ways we can do this formula, but the idea is. Here it's 97. Here it's the addition of both of these. In this cell, it's the addition of all of these. So one way to do this is to say equals this and enter. Equals and click here. That's the total from the previous class plus, ah, that right there. Control Enter, that gives us our 143. When we copy it down, we click in the last cell and hit the F2 key. You can see, sure enough, that's a very clever formula. It works just fine. There's our cumulative numbers, but we want percent cumulative frequency. Well, we just compare this to the whole, this to the total or whole, 
this to the total or whole. So we say equals relative cell reference one to my left divided by our 200. Notice the 200 is always going to be in the last class because up through the last class we've we've accounted for all 200 transactions. Of course, I have to lock that with the F4 key. Control Enter. Notice it's preformatted. I preformatted it. If it wasn't, you'd go to here and copy it down. Now there's a book shows you uh, relative cumulative frequency. Obviously, it's just without the percentage number format. So 100%. That means 100% because we built our categories correctly. Remember, made sure the lower end on the first class and the upper end on the last class include all the values between them. When we get to this class right here, of course, we've accounted for 100% of the transactions. Now, again, the way you, you look at this is 90%. It means from the upper end, 150 bucks, we sold 90% of the boomerangs for $150 or less. You could also say 90% uh, less than or equal to $150. Those are the transactions. Now, we d I want a label here to explicitly uh, state this. And I'm going to show you, I told you I'd to show you two formulas for this. I'm also going to show you two ways to label this. Now, for this one, I'm just going to say revenue $50 or less. Here, for the category, I'll say revenue $100 or less. So we'll build our text formula equals revenue and double quote. So this formula only has text so far. Shift 7 for ampersand. So revenue, if I control enter and copy that down, that's just giving me revenue of that. But you know, I'd actually like to see a dollar sign there. So I'm going to click at the top and F2. I'm going to very carefully click right there. Notice I left a space, but I want to put my cursor right next to the double quotes and type a dollar sign. Control Enter. Double click and send it. Ah, OK, that's looking good. Now I click here in F2. Now I need to finish this. Remember, revenue 50 bucks and less. So I have to join double quotes, space, and less. Whoops, sorry, not and, or less. And double quote. You know, if I spell a word wrong here and enter it, spell check won't catch it. So you better F7, and um, F7 is the keyboard shortcut for spell check while you're in edit mode. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now, it's a little bit easier to read, right? 90% had revenue, transactions had revenue $150 or less. 71%, $100 or less. Now let me show you two alternatives. I'm going to put the formula over here, but I actually want to just uh, copy this right here. Now watch this. I've highlighted this. I'm going to copy just the formatting. I'm going to click on this button up here, Format Painter. Notice it's got that paintbrush. I click, and there it is. Now I'm also now going to copy, straight copy, Control C and Control V. Now for the label, instead of by the way, the dancing ants, you can turn those off by hitting Escape. Revenues, 50 bucks or less. Another way to say this would say, be to say less than or equal to $50. So I'm going to create that label here. Equals in, in, in text, less than or equal to. Now the same situation here, I want that dollar sign. So I'm going to very carefully put a dollar sign right there and then join that text in double quotes with the ampersand to the upper limit. There it is. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Why won't it work? Double click, because there's nothing to the left, below, or to the right. So you have to manually pull it down. Now cumulative frequency. There's my frequency there. Now here we did a single formula to start it, and then a second formula in the column, that one plus the one above, and then copied it down. By the way, that's a great formula for running balance and anything. Ah, but there's another way to do this. Now this is kind of nice. It's nice. It's simple to do. 
sometimes I forget, you know, and I come here and I forget that there's two formulas and it messes me up somehow. So this example will give us one formula to calculate a running total. So in this cell right here, we're going to use the sum function. And I'm going to click on that many to my left. It's that many, F4. But I'm going to hit colon and close parentheses. Now, that's a silly formula, F4 colon F4. Huh. Let's enter this. That's actually a range, a single cell range, which is silly. But let's enter this, Control Enter, and copy it down a few. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. But let's notice something. F6 to F6. Those are relative cell references. F4, F4. When they're down here, they're both F6, F6. What if we locked that one, F4, but not this one? When I got down here, it would be F6 to F4. That means this blue box would expand as we copy the formula down. That's called an expandable range. So with the cell touching the first F4, hit the F4 key to lock it, those dollar signs. Pretty cool. Control Enter, drag it down. And now check this out. Look at this. I edit mode here, the blue box is 2. Enter F2, the blue box is 3. Enter F2, the blue box is 4. Expandable range. All right, so those are some alternatives. Now let's calculate our chart. Now we're going to do this two ways. Um, the, there's going to be a combined chart with both label frequency and the cumulative percent line on top of the histogram column. And then we'll see how to do an actual technical cumulative frequency, which is called an ogive chart uh, using an XY scatter. Both are OK. Both you know, reveal uh, the patterns in the data. Now, let's create our histogram right up front. I got my labels and my frequency. This is just our straight frequency distribution and histogram. My keyboard shortcut for the default chart, column, instead of going to insert column, I'm going to use Alt F1. I'm going to delete this, delete, delete the lines, delete. Click here, say uh, histogram and ogive, that's how you spell ogive. I want to add a label down at the bottom, I'm going to go to layout, axis, horizontal below. I'm going to come up here. Um, transactions, transaction revenue in dollars. Enter. I want to click on the columns, select them all. Control 1 opens up format cells, change the gap width to 0. I either change the color so they vary, or I come to border colors. And uh, for the border, because the blue ones are kind of hard to see, solid line. And I'm going to select black. If it's not black, click black. That just helps us to differentiate. Click OK. Click over here. You can see we have those. Now, let's go ahead and add a second data series to this. There's a few ways we could do this, but I'm going to show you the kind of cool, quick way. Highlight, Control-C, click on the chart somewhere, and Control-V. I copied some cells. I clicked on the chart, and when I paste Control-V, it pastes it right into the chart. Now, this, that's not what we want. We want to select it and change two things. We want to change the chart type, and we want to change it to a second axis. Now, it is very hard because these are all less than the number 1, and these numbers are you know, integers. It's hard to select that. So another way, if you're having trouble selecting, is to go out to Layout. And up here in the current selection, you can select the dropdown and select frequent, Series Frequency, and it highlights the columns, or whatever aspect you, or element you want. I'm going to say Series Percentage Cumulative Frequency. Now that I have that selected, I want to change the chart type. So I'm going to go to Design, Change Chart Type to Line with Markers. That still doesn't help us. It's easier to select now. Now I want to 
format this. Now, Control-1 is not working for me when I have this double chart. I'm not quite sure why. So I'm going to right click and point to Format Data Series. There's actually a ribbon way up in Format to, to, to do that also. And look at this. We want to change to Secondary Axis. Watch this right now. Now this, these both these numbers are plotted off this. But as soon as I say Secondary Axis, it jumps up. And look at that. That is so cool. That's how to combine a chart. All right. Now, I would like to select these and add some percentages above. So I'm going to go to Layout. Data labels, and I'm going to say above. That's kind. Of, that's kind of cool. I'm going to uh, leave that here. Now, one thing about putting these here is that we now we have duplicates. And actually, if we delete this, it it doesn't do any good at all. Um, let me try that again. I think no, I don't think I, if you delete it, there we go. That doesn't work at all. Control Z. So I'm actually going to trick this. I'm going to right click and go to font color on the mini toolbar white. Just trick it, flat out trick it. Now the way you interpret this chart uh, is it's always the upper number. 48% of the sales were 50 bucks or less. 71% of the sales were 100 bucks or less. 90% uh, of the sales were um, 150 bucks or less. So this is kind of mashing two charts together. Now I'm going to pull this out of the way. Turn off the Dancing Ants Escape. Scroll down right just a little bit. I want to. OK, so there we go. And I'm going to pull this with that my move cursor right down here. Now I want to create an actual XY scatter. And the trick is for an ogive is you want to attach the first part of the line, and this is going to be an XY scatter where we actually use the XY scatter not with markers but with lines, it's got to be attached to the uh, axis at whatever point the smallest point is. So for the f upper, we want the upper limits for our X value except for the first point which is the lower limit of the first class. Now here it happens to be 0 in our age data in the last couple of videos, it was 15. So here I'm going to say equals, and it's always the lower limit of the first class. That's the x. And then obviously, if we take the lower limit, what's the percentage of transactions we sold for less than or equal to 0? Zero? 0%. Zero if it was the age data we had from before, 0 of the per uh, transactions were less than 15. So this is an extra uh, item we have to add above and beyond these data points up here. Now the rest of it is straightforward because the point of this is less than or equal to the upper limit. So the rest of these are all upper limits. Equals, I click on the upper limit. Notice that's a relative cell reference. As I copy this down, the blue box will move down. Control Enter. I drag it down, click on the last cell in F2. You can see, sure enough, that worked perfect. Same with the cumulative frequencies. Because remember, the whole point of this is at any particular cumulative of percentages, it's less than or equal to the upper value. So that's the first one there. As we copy it down, it, the box will move. Double click and send it down. All right. The only thing different here is that we now have an anchor for our line on the horizontal axis. Now I highlight this, and this is an XY. So I'm going to go up to Insert, Scatter. Not that one. We, we, we don't have our actual raw data points. We actually have some more or less uh, predicted values here. And I'm going to click this one. And there we go. I'm going to click on this Delete. Maybe uh, delete the lines. Percent cumulative frequency, that's OK. Uh, you know, I've been showing you how to control Z, come up here, which is fine. You either make formulas or edit your text there. You can also, if you get the dash lines, you can come to the end and type something. Then I'm going to click over here. Now, let's add some percentages here. Layout, data labels maybe above. 
we could actually delete this if we want. It won't hurt the chart because it doesn't have two, both a primary and a secondary. So yeah, I don't know, maybe you want it or maybe you don't. Control Z if you want it here. It's a little, it's got a little bit of repetition here. Maybe we get rid of this delete, but maybe we add the lines back. Format plot area. I don't think I remember how to add the lines back up. Grid lines. There it is. Horizontal grid lines. Let's do major. So there we go there. I don't think I've ever done that before. So however you want to do your chart, but clearly we can see 90% with this OJIVE chart. 150 bucks or less per transactions. That was 90% of the uh, transactions. Uh, for 71%, about 71%, transactions were 100 bucks or less. So that's an OJIVE. All right, so we did it with the XY scatter and the combined chart. Now I want to show you how to do it with a pivot table, which is uh, quick and easy, and also then the data analysis add-in. Now I'm going to click up here in this data set and actually zoom in a little bit. By the way, you know you have to have a blank column all the way down when you're doing uh, pivot tables or sorting. The fact that this chart is hanging over will not affect it. Click in a single cell, insert pivot table, pivot table. Escape, the keyboard shortcut is Alt-NVT. I'm going to put it on a new sheet. If you know it's on a new sheet and you have your data set set up correctly, it's Alt-NVT, Enter. All right, now we need to do a OJIVE chart. We're going to do the histogram and OJIVE together. So I'm going to drag revenue down to rows. I have to group this. Right click group. I'm going to start at 0, tab, tab, 300, tab, 50 increment. Remember, this is, we saw how to calculate these values uh, uh, in an earlier video, but here we have them, so we click OK, and there we group. Now, the pivot table, as we saw earlier, when it has decimals like this, it gives us these ambiguous categories. We could leave these like these, and lots of, if you go out there and look in the working world, lots of people do because they just know it's the upper end. We saw our little trick. If you want to replace the dash with something like up to, you can use home s replace, so in the uh, fi so find select replace, or the keyboard shortcut control H, control H. And then you find what? A dash, tab, find what? A dash, replace with space, up space to space, replace all. And then click OK. Now we've grouped it, and we need two columns, one and two. So we drag it twice down to values. We click here, and I'm going to type frequency. Notice the default is count, those are these labels here. Ooh, row labels, I'm going to come up to design and quickly change it. I think we've done that like 10 times already in this class. Now here, we need to change this calculation. We have a frequency, that'll be our histogram. We need cumulative. Now there's two things. Actually, I'm going to drag this down one more time and show you what's possible and then delete one of them because we won't need it for our chart. Right click and value field settings. We talked about how this has the, the power. You can do everything here. If you want cumulative, you go to show values as, calculation, and you'd scroll down and say running total in. And then you'd have to say what field it is it you want the running total in, revenue. I'm going to click OK. Notice now we get perfectly our running total. I'm going to control uh, Z. Another way to do that is to right click and we have values, summarize values by which are functions or show values as. Absolutely awesome. This um, ribbon is, this is also up in the ribbon too somewhere. So running total in. It asks us revenue, click OK. I'm going to type uh, cumulative frequency. Here I'm going to say a percent. I think I'm spelling some words wrong there. Frequency. Did I spell it right? Okay. Frequency F7. Okay. 
check the whole sheet. All right, it looks like I did it right. All right, so cumulative frequency. Now, we saw we can either do it with value field settings, but you can also right click show values as. You're not going to believe this. This one is brand new in 2010. Percent running total in. Earlier, even 2007 didn't ha have this. There's some amazing new pivot table calculations. Percent running total in, and there it is. Asks you which field revenue we want that. Click OK. Wow, absolutely awesome. Now I'm going to drag this cumulative frequency away because we don't need it for our chart. Pivot table will show all of them. I just want two of them. I'm going to click in any cell here and use my keyboard shortcut either insert column or design, or let's see, options pivot chart or a keyboard shortcut alt F1. That's the default chart. I'm going to get this field list out of the way. I'm just going to close it. I'm going to right click these and say hide all field buttons. I'm going to click on this and I want to move it to the top. I need to right click format or control one. Show it at the top. How about layout chart title above chart and then um, histogram and ogive. I'm going to go to axis, horizontal. I'm going to click up here. Transactions and dollars. Now we still have the problem of selecting. Remember we saw just a while ago, it's hard to click, so you can go up to, it's actually, oh, so they have them on format, either one right there in this group. So you can select whichever one you want. Once you have it selected, you can also right click. It's hard to right click. There is a right click key on your keyboard. You can right click and go to change chart type, or with it selected, just go up to design, change chart type, line. Click OK. Click on that, and we need to change it to a secondary axis. Right click, format data series. Let's see if Control 1 works here. I, I, I don't know why it didn't work that last time. So all I did was format this second, this line here, put it on the secondary axis. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Um, let's click on the columns, Control 1 change the gap width. I'm going to fill and I'm going to, oh, it doesn't have it here. In the pivot chart, it doesn't have it there. So we are going to have to go to border colors and solid line. Click close. All right. Um, so there you go. That's a with a pivot table and pivot chart. Remember, if you pivot this or change it, the chart automatically updates. One last uh, option, or actually two, two last points. I want to click on the sheet Pareto. A certain type of chart that involves some, sometimes involves a cumulative total is called a Pareto chart. And uh, this is categorical data, right? So we have these categories. People were dissatisfied with their boomerangs, and we, we had the reasons why. And these were the categories, bad finish, unattractive, design did not work, broken when thrown, rough wood, no instructions. Now, earlier we talked about the categories for categorical data. They, they really don't uh, have any particular order. But when we sort the numbers, then we, have, we sort it. So right click, sort, Z to A. Then we get the biggest ones on top. When you do that, then we do get some order here, but it's from the height of the columns. And that's called a, a Pareto chart. And usually in quality control, you'll see charts like this. The item that caused the most trouble will be the highest column and to the left most. Right? And then we did what? We created a cumulative percent. Now, I will show you how to, to do this right here. Uh, notice it went away, but it will come back in just a moment once I put this here. In our last video, we had a cumulative total and then a separate column for percent cumulative. But here, I'm going to say equals sum of this, 
colon, close parentheses, and lock it. That's our expandable range divided by the count, F4. So this is kind of like our pivot table where we just wanted frequency and just cumulative. Control Enter and double click and send it or uh, to drag it down so we get 100%. And now we see our chart. And then we made this chart uh, the same way as we made our last couple charts when we combined them, added this copy paste, changed the chart type, added the secondary axis. You can see I, um, ooh, did I show you that trick back over here? Oh, yes, I did where we changed the font to white. All right? So, but this is a certain type of. Uh, cumulative chart for the heights of the column when you have categorical data and the frequencies are sorted, called a, a Pareto chart. One last awesome feature, I'm going to come over to DATIA, Data Analysis Tool Add-in, and we want to do the same thing. We want to quickly create a, hist a frequency distribution, a histogram, and an ogive. Now, this method is great when uh, you're in a hurry and you don't want anything you do in the cells linked to uh, the original data set, like the formulas would be, or even the pivot table. All right? you, we, we saw back in Chapter 00 how to add in. I'm going to go to the data, and we added this data analysis tool pack in. So the way you do that is you go to File, Options, then in options you go to add in and then down here you have to select this Excel add in and click go and then you have to select analysis toolbox check it and click OK but once you have it it's just going to show up there data analysis in the data ribbon so I'm going to click it and we'll see a few on the few more times in this class when we get to use it I'm going to click on histogram by the way I have little screenshots of the dialog boxes if you download this Click OK. And our input range, I'm not going to check this label, so I'm going to highlight just the numbers. Control Shift Down Arrow. And like we saw with the frequency function, you have to type bins. These are the upper ends. So again, this is a very fast and dirty method of doing it, but you're stuck with a, this, this type of um, categorization. These are just like our frequency function we saw in video 15 at the very end of that video. These are the upper ends and the count will include the upper end. That's different than our count if function. All right? Bins, upper upper ends of each class, uh, the data. We want this on a new worksheet. Actually, let's put this output range and I'm going to put it like right here. Oh, there's a Pareto, so you could do that. Cumulative percentage and chart output. So the cumulative percentage and chart output, I'm going to click OK. So look at that. Just like that, it creates our uh, frequency. And it calculated these as the upper ends, so the upper ends. And it created an extra category called more. That means more than uh, 300. So there's our count for frequency. That's what we got. This gave us one more. This is what we got with our count ifs. If you uh, watch the, the part about the frequency function, we got that many. Here's our cumulative uh, perc percent that we got doing our formulas. Um, and it adds an extra one because of that category right here. Here's our histogram. Now notice the people who program this, and some people uh, don't actually put make the columns touching, right? They just assume, hey, I can see the uh, patterns in the data with regardless if they're touching or not, but having them touch is a visual way of saying these are there are no numbers that can fit in between these. I'm going to click on this, Control-1, put at the top. You can do anything you want to this. You could actually absolutely fix this, Control-1, slide the gap border, solid line, black. So you can do whatever you want once you got it. These numbers are not connected there. Once it, you run the data analysis, it's just dumped in the cell. But man, that is fast and easy. Now, for this class, for testing, um, all three methods are open for testing. And usually what I do is I see if you can do one of each, do it with uh, some formulas, do it with a pivot table, and do it with the data analysis uh, tool pack add-in. 
All right, uh, that's a lot about cumulative. Frequencies, percent, cumulative, and ogive charts. When we come back in our next video, we actually have a, a one, our first short video that talks about uh, the histogram shape and skew. All right, see you next video.